Now that I've shared with you just a ton of tips on all these different type of usability issues that you can run into in SharePoint, I mean literally up until these last five videos that I'm doing, uh, I've literally shared with you 96 different usability issues that you can actually receive uh, in a system like SharePoint. So now I kind of want to wrap it up by spending a few videos and actually talking about, well, what can we do about this? How do we figure out exactly what the issues are with our users, with our systems and that kind of stuff. Well, the first step is actually something we've talked about all along the way, and that is actually doing usability testing. So you might remember, or you may not, back in the first video, we actually talked about some of the heuristics that we would look at in there, including these five quality components from learnability, how easy is it for a user to figure out how to do something, efficiency, how quickly can they get that task done, a memorability after they haven't done it for a while, can a user remember that, especially when you talk about search in SharePoint, can I figure out how to get back to something. Errors, what happens if I receive an error and uh, can I recover? How severe are they? Satisfaction, how pleasant it is to use in there. So so when we start looking at doing usability testing, we like to do what's called a heuristic. Otherwise, we're going to do task-based testing. And so one of the first things we want to do is we want to really determine what we're trying to figure out. So we want to kind of establish a purpose. Uh, why are we testing? What are the issues that we're seeing or hearing? Is it feedback? Is it just our website's really old? or is it that our SharePoint seems to be really hard for people to use or what is it and that what are kind of our worlds so that we really understand what do we really need to test and again it's not about testing a specific thing as much it's about testing patterns that people actually do so once we've uh, kind of established that we want to kind of design our test so overall a good rule of thumb is to test at least five people that gives you some good levels of significance what you kind of find is if you're asking people the same questions which you should in any good usability test you're over going to find that at about five people you're in after you're going to start getting a lot of repeats in what they're seeing and the usability issues you're seeing so five people tends to be a very good number as long as it's kind of randomly selected from your company you can set up use cases so what are you trying to do sometimes you want to match those people to the different types of users that you might have in a system you know obviously get permission to use whatever data you're going to do and one of the most important parts out of everything out of there from age to to gender to any other type of demographic data the most significant thing that you should be testing is users from different levels of competency otherwise somebody who is a beginner to somebody who's uh, very comfortable to somebody who maybe is in your IT group or something like that that is a, that is a true expert in there but that's a lot of times where you'll get the, the biggest variety is from how they actually use it because they all actually have different user patterns that they tend to follow uh, as far as how they work with things in the browser. Uh, some of the usability tests we can do, well, first and foremost is what we've been talking about, heuristic evaluation, uh, paper prototyping, card sorting, uh, which is kind of more of an information architecture activity, and then surveys. The only one we're really going to talk about is heuristic evaluation right now. So heuristic evaluation is having a small set of evaluators examine an interface and judge it against recognized usability principles. So these tend to be the 10 usability heuristics that we look at it. So visibility of system staff, do you, do you know where you're at in a system? The match between system and real world, how much is it between the way you do it in SharePoint to the way that you'd actually do this when you weren't in SharePoint? Uh, how much user control and freedom? Do you have to follow a real stringent path or are you able to move around in that? Uh, consistency, does the interface stay consistent? We've talked about that and you know from uh, people changing templates to all that kind of stuff. Error prevention, well we all know that story in SharePoint. Uh, recognition rather than recall, what that really means is instead of having to remember something, you actually see something, whether it's a navigational component, maybe the name of a page or something like that, and you recognize that. <laughs> Flexibility and efficiency of use. So how efficient is it to use? Do you have to go 47 clicks or do you have a clear path uh, that you can go down? Uh, obviously the aesthetics and minimal design, so how much does it look? Um, recovering from errors, we've kind of already talked about. And then help and documentation. So otherwise, if I get stuck, is there something there for me that can actually help me out? So when we're designing our tests, overall we want to kind of develop a list of tasks that you want a user to perform. Uh, we like to set up representative tasks, you know, complete some kind of process, you know, go find this piece of information or go sign up for this new event or whatever it might be. Create something, whatever it might be. But overall, have task-oriented things and things that these people may do in their daily lives in the SharePoint system. 
We're not going to look at a sample usability test right now, but overall you can run your test. One of the big things that you want to do is you want to really reassure your users. You want to kind of go over the expectations, make sure the user understands that you're testing the system, the interface, the SharePoint site, and not them, and that's really critical. And the, the tester should not be a stakeholder in the project, so otherwise you should not be testing people on your project team or people that have a serious personal stake in the SharePoint system because they will tend to give you very skewed results. Once you kind of run your tests, then you're going to run through the tasks and collect the data, so you're going to do that. We're going to talk in another video about some of the tools that you can use for that but overall what you can do is kind of collect the data you don't want to be coaching the user whoever's proctoring this you want to kind of let them do it sometimes you're going to actually sit there and they're going to be struggling 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 and you're going to want to say something so really bad but you really shouldn't and as a matter of fact there's a good reason that people on the project team really shouldn't run this if you can possibly get away with it because they just tend to be too personal like oh hey it's just up there in the corner look at that uh, we see that all the time <clears throat> you know ask the user to verbalize their tasks so you don't always know what's going through their mind so ask them to kind of share that with them and you know make sure that they don't do too much time what's the value well you know if somebody's going to take 20 minutes to complete a task and obviously you're going to probably assist and you're going to know that they completely failed that task. So after it, you're going to kind of debrief the user. You're going to ask them about their overall experience. Ask them for any suggestions and thank them. We're actually going to talk about another thing called the uh, system usability scale that is something that we actually use after our usability test to kind of do some kind of uh, objective grading based on kind of a well-established scale that I'll be talking about in another video as well. So once you get that done, you're kind of looking at your analysis in there. And as you can kind of see here on the screen, we're actually looking Looking at some of these things, this is actually a, a task here for a college that we worked on. This is actually time on tasks in seconds, and you can see here that right here, 45 seconds is about the threshold of most college students' patience, and we have uh, literally almost every single test took longer. But one task actually took 228 seconds. So we can look at these different things, you know, severe, how frequently something happened, the impact, uh, how persistent it was, and that kind of stuff. And then you want to kind of put it in some type of reports. There's a lot of information out there on how you should kind of write these to be able to present them to people. And so in summary, what you want to do is you kind of want to do a usability test that's going to be useful. You want to have it very functional in nature and you want to use a wide variety of users. Even though you're using only five, the most critical parts is to use users that actually have different competency levels around your SharePoint system.